The Functionalist, History of Psychology, Professor Mike Botwin, Department of Psychology, California State University, Fresno. In our last installment on functionalism, we're going to look at many of the figures who are in the textbook and are briefly mentioned or have just a little bit of research. I'm focusing here on their contributions to psychology, not necessarily their educations and their comings and goings and things. So these are things you should focus on for the exam. They're all interesting people. In fact, what you start seeing with this last lecture is the introduction of some diversity. We have a black psychologist in Sumner and also a woman psychologist with Mary Calkins. There are other functionalists mentioned in the textbook, and you should look at them, but here are the last few you should focus on for class. Enjoy. Hugo Munsterberg was one of the first applied psychologists. He was a German national and worked in the United States although fell out of favor with people after continuing to support the German government during World War I. He was a Wundt student, although he didn't agree with Wundt on every. He believed consciousness is a byproduct of bodily activity and that behavior causes ideas. You'll find this idea coming up again in the next unit with Sektenoff and Reflexology. He also found that eyewitness testimony could be unreliable as sensory impressions could be illusionary or could be mitigated by other variables in the environment that made them unreliable. He also believed that harsh interrogations could lead to false confessions with criminals oftentimes excuse me, oftentimes uh, wanting to bow to authorities rather than continuing to submit to harsh conditions. He was also interested in industrial psychology and then worked in the areas of personnel selection, work efficiency, marketing, and advertising. Mary Witten Calkins was the first president of the American Psychological Association to be a woman. Her work mainly was on memory functions. She found the frequency of an occurrence of a stimuli facilitated memory, excuse me, far more than recency or vividness effects did. Francis Sumner is the father of black psychology. He got his degree from Stanley Hall and worked in a variety of different settings, eventually founding the psychology department at Howard University. He was responsible for the first graduate training program for blacks in the country and chaired many masters and doctoral theses at Howard. G. Stanley Hall is another one of the great functionalists. He's considered one of the great founders of psychological organizations. He was very interested, excuse me, very integral in finding the American Psychological Association and founded two major journals, the American Journal of Psychology and the Journal of Genetic Psychology. Hall's primary area of study was adolescence. He believed that was one of the most important stages of development, and he did extensive work in this area. His major theory is something called the recapitulation theory. This is an evolutionary theory that says each individual in their lifetime reenacts all the previous stages of evolutionary existence before humans. So we start off as single-cell critters. We move on to fish-like 
creatures eventually becoming reptilian and then infants when we're born and act in our childhood years very much like primates until we mature as an adult. James Angel, you, you've heard before with the functional manifesto, was interested in mental operations rather than mental elements. He believed mental processes mediated the needs of the body and the organism. In other words, if your body was hungry, your mind thought about eating. And he believed that the mind and body were unitary structure and act as a mechanism for the survival of the unit. In Angel's theory, the mind has three functions. Knowing things, feeling or having emotions, and then doing or actions. This has been a We Have Couches video production, copyright 2020, Professor Michael Botwin, all rights reserved. Bye now.